questions and complications in this uh, video. Uh, this hydratus is the typical locations are most common is the liver followed by lung followed by spleen and these are all the atypical locations like uh, cerebral, spinal, retroperitoneal, renal, musculoskeletal and mediastinal locations. Coming to the first case, 20 year female presented with complaints of pain in the right hypochondrium. You can see there is a cystic lesion in the right lobe of the liver with few daughter cysts in the segment 6 and 7 of liver. So this is a typical hydrated cyst in the liver. And I, this here I want to show the another case which is a typical hydrated cyst with multiple daughter cysts noted in the liver on ultrasound. So this is the typical appearance of hydrated cysts on, uh, in liver on ultrasound. Here this is a 35 year female presented with complaints of pain in right hypochondrium and fever. You can see there is a cystic lesion in the right lobe of the liver with eccentric uh, rim calcification. And also you can see there is a uh, radiopaque shadow also noted in the right lobe of the right lower lobe of lung in the adjacent to the hemidiaphragm on the right side. Uh, this is the zoomed image you can see this is a cystic lesion with faint rim calcification and this is that radiopaque shadow in the right uh, in the right lower lobe of lung. Here you can see this is a cetal axial sections. You can see this clearly. This is the hydrated cyst, and there is a breach in the wall of the hydrated cyst, and there is expulsion of the uh, contents of the hydrated cyst into the pleural space or pleural cavity. So this is a case of hydrated cyst with direct rupture into the pleural cavity. So this is hydrated cyst with direct rupture into the pleural cavity or pleural space. Most common location is the right lobe of the liver uh, adjacent to the bare area where there is a uh, peritoneal covering is uh, defective so that uh, the hydrated cyst easily ruptures into the pleural cavity. Next this is other case where you can see there is a hydrated cyst with multiple daughter cysts and there is a breach in the wall of the hydrated cyst with expulsion of the contents of the hydrated cyst into the peritoneal cavity. So this is also a case of hydrated cyst with direct rupture into peritoneal cavity. So what the complications of hydrated cyst are uh, rupture of the hydrated cyst and second is secondary bacterial infection. Rupture of the hydrated cyst is either contained rupture, communicating rupture and direct rupture. Contained rupture is when the endocyst separates from the pericyst and there is a fluid accumulation between the endocyst and the pericyst where you can see detached laminated membranes. Communicating hydrated cyst is when the hydrated cyst communicates with that of the biliary tree or bronchial trees. Direct rupture is when the hydrated cyst ruptures into the pleural cavity or peritoneal cavity. So this is the hydrated cyst with direct rupture into peritoneal cavity. Next, uh, these are the other typical hydrated cysts in the lung. This is hydrated cyst with fluid level noted within the hydrated cyst. Likely hydrated cyst with bronchial communication. These are multiple hydrated cysts in the lung. Here this is other case where you can see there is a cystic lesion noted in the peritoxpital lobe with typical uh, fluid collection between the pericyst and the endocyst and there are detached laminated membranes typically mimicking that water lily sign or water lily appearance. So this is also a case of contained rupture in the brain. This is also there other, another case where you can see there is a cyst, hydrated cyst in the uh, bony calvarium and even scalp. There is erosion of the bone. Here you can see there is erosion and destruction of the bone with extension of the hydrated cyst contents into the uh, intracranial cavity in the extra extraaxial spaces. Uh, and these are the uh, Leishman stain where you can see the hooklets of the hydrated. So this is a calvarial or scalp hydrated with intracranial extension. And this is contained rupture of the hydrated in the brain. Next case, you can see there is a 24 year female presented with complaints in left hypochondrium pain. You can see there is a large cystic lesion noted in the spleen with eccentric rim calcification. And this is the cystic lesion showing peripheral rim enhancement. So this is a hydrated cyst in spleen. Next case, you can clearly see there is a calcified lesion noted in the spleen. So this is a completely calcified splenic hydrated cyst. Next case, 40 year old female with pain abdomen, vomiting, fever and cough. You can see there is a cystic lesion in the left, uh, left half of the abdomen with multiple daughter cysts within the mesentery and it is also seen extending anterior to the stomach and even extending into the left lobe of the liver. So this is a mesentric hydrated cyst. Next case, 27 year old male presented with vague abdominal pain. Uh, here you can see there is a cystic lesion with eccentric rim calcification noted arising from the mid pole of the left kidney. On IV contrast, you can see there is peripheral rim enhancement. So this is nothing but a hydrated cyst in the kidney. Next case, 35 year old female painless swelling in the left lumbar region since 3 years. You can see uh, this is the erect abdomen radiograph. You can see there is clearly right psoas shadow is clearly seen, but the left psoas shadow is not not seen. Here you can see this is the normal right psoas muscle, but there is a cystic lesion with multiple uh, daughter cysts noted within the left psoas muscle. 
and here you can see this is the large cystic lesion with multiple daughter cysts noted in the left psoas muscle so this is a case of hydatid cyst in left psoas muscle thanks to dr asmita gadekar for contributing this case next case 62 year male with painless swelling in the thigh since 2 years you can see there is a large cystic lesion in the thigh here also there is a large uh, uh, radiopaque homogeneous radiopaque density lesion noted in the thigh on ultrasound you can see there is a cystic lesion with multiple daughter cyst and here this is mr where you can see there are uh, large cystic lesion with daughter cyst and enhancing septa and here this is the operative intraoperative findings you can see this is the large cystic lesion with multiple daughter cysts and this is the gross specimen of the same case so this is a hydatid cyst of thigh next case you can see there is a cystic lesion also noted in the right paraspinal region which is extending through the neural foramina into the sp uh, spinal into the thecal sac with intraspinal extension and there is also erosion of the vertebra so this is a hydatid cyst in paraspinal region with intraspinal extension next uh, this is the hydatid cyst also so you can see there is a large hydatid cyst multiple daughter cysts noted on the uh, posterior to the bladder on right side here on iv contrast on ct on iv contrast you can see this is the uh, cystic lesion with multiple daughter cysts posterior to the bladder next we will try to see the classification one slide about classification this is the who classification of hepatic hydatid cysts you can see these are classified into ce1 ce2 ce3 a b ce4 and ce5 so ce1 is nothing but a unilocular simple cyst ce2 is multivesicular and multiseptic cystic lesion ce3 where you can see multiple detached laminated membranes ce4 uh, ce3b is nothing but multiple daughter cysts with mucinous or solid component and ce4 is nothing but there will be uh, detached membranes with degeneration will be starting within the ce4 and ce5 is completely degenerated or inactive inactive cysts and the same gerbi ultrasound classification this is the five stages one is a uh, well defined hypoechoic cystic lesion second is septated cystic lesion third is cystic lesion with daughter lesions fourth is pseudo tumor like lesion and fifth is completely calcified inactive cysts so this is also one slide where we can see what are the signs and active lesions c c cl c1 2 are considered as active ce3 is nothing but transitional ce4 is mostly inactive and ce type 5 is nothing but non viable and these are the si variable signs which we seen in hydatidosis in varying stages of the hydatidosis so thanks to dr manav and dr shashank chapala for contributing uh, cases in this uh, lecture thank you all